So Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. Deadpool two. Deadpool two. Brad Pitt is an actor so famous he can basically pick and choose whatever roles he wants. Something that has led to him being referred to as the hardest get in Hollywood. Something the producers of Deadpool 2 were well aware of when they offered Pitt a two second cameo in the film. So Brad Pitt is in Deadpool 2? Yes, but he's in it for two straight seconds. And to explain, in Deadpool 2 there is a character who is called The Vanisher, whose power set is that he's invisible. And there's like a big running gag that he doesn't talk either he's shy, I guess. And like you see him throughout the movie as a member of the X-Force until they go on their big final mission, during which, spoilers, they all die immediately, including the Vanisher, who is electrocuted to death, during which time you can see for a split second that, holy shit, the Vanisher was Brad Pitt. Vanisher. Maybe the wind can't blow what it can't see. I remember, yeah, I remember seeing that and thinking, what? Wait, yeah, that's what? The, that's the exact reaction a lot of people have. So you've seen the, what was your reaction when you saw like, wait, what, is that Brad Pitt? Yeah, I was like, because it was so fast, I was like, wait, that wasn't Brad Pitt. Why would, why would he be in a Deadpool movie? Exactly. Like, why? And that's the reason why they did it. Because according to the screenwriters, like they thought The Vanisher would be a, a good vehicle for a cameo and specifically an A-list cameo, because how funny would it be to get the biggest actor we can get to agree to this to appear in our film for two seconds, during which they are currently being electrocuted to death. And like, obviously, Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds, and this idea was pitched to him went, that's fucking brilliant. Yes, I am very on board with this. So is there a reason why it's specifically Brad Pitt? Well, it's because Brad Pitt is Brad Pitt in the sense that he is so famous, as I mentioned in the intro, like, he can pick and choose whatever roles he wants. Like, like, nobody calls up Brad Pitt and says, I've got a role for you that you're gonna love. No, Brad Pitt calls them up and says, I wanna be in your movie. And they knew this because like, in like, you know, the industry, he's known as the hardest get, because like, nobody gets Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt either turns up or he fucking doesn't. So when they floated the idea past Ryan Reynolds, Ryan went, well, I know Brad Pitt because, you know, everyone in Hollywood knows everybody else. And I'm going to call him and just see if he wants to be in the film. Because why not? It's worth it. Just, like, see if we can get him. Yeah. And according to Ryan Reynolds, he called up Brad Pitt and went, um, Yeah, Brad, uh, do you want to be in Deadpool 2? We've got an idea for, like, you know, a little joke. Um, it's a day. And Brad Pitt was like, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, my kids love Deadpool 1. Um, send me the details over, we'll get something arranged. And that was it. Wow. And that to me is fucking weird because that's so Brad Pitt. He's such a cool fucking dude. Yeah. So um, like, he's one of those people, like, the stories about him are just always amazing. Like, um, have you heard about the long standing prank war he's had going on with George Clooney? I, f I feel like I've heard of this. Okay, well, there's a. We'll set the scene like George Clooney and Brad Pitt have been pranking each other on and off for years. Like, uh, I think since they met on, like, I think one of the Oceans movies, they've become really Ocean's good friends. Or something. It's mostly George Clooney who's pranked Brad Pitt because George Clooney apparently just loves playing pranks. And the one that I really like is that he got a load of stationery um, with, from, like, with Brad Pitt's name on it and sent out letters to other Hollywood celebrities, ostensibly from Brad. I sent Meryl Streep a letter. <laughs> from Brad, where I got a big thing of CDs that had, it was a dialect coach. She's very confused. <laughs> and apparently like George Clooney said, oh, I put a, um, a big weed bumper sticker on the back of his car that said, fuck cops. Oh, no. Because there's no <laughs> way you drive around Hollywood with that without getting pulled over. I found a bumper sticker in the shape of a pot plant that said, fuck cops. <laughs> Right, this isn't anything to do with like Brad Pitt, but the best George Clooney one he's ever done. It's my favorite. You'll like this as well, because it's got a cat in it. Of course. And it's where his old roommate had a cat. And what Clooney did is, every day for about two weeks, would wake up before his housemate and get all the poops out of the kitty litter tray. So the guy thought his cat was constipated. And the guy took his cat to the vet and got it like constipation medicine. And the cat was like pooping like three times a day. And George Clooney wouldn't like do it for it. He snuck in stole the poos, and then one day when his housemate was out, took a huge human-sized shit in the cat litter tray. Oh. Comes in, grabs the paper, goes to the bathroom. I'm watching Jeopardy. <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear, oh my God, Kitty! Because, you've got cats, haven't you? Yeah. You imagine going to your cat litter tray and you just saw a full human-sized log just in the cat litter tray yeah. and just your cat looking up at you going, 
Meow. Um, yeah, I'd be majorly concerned. <laughs> it's the fact the guy thought the cat was constipated. <laughs> and then oh, come in amazing, and just though. sees a human-sized turd in the cat litter tray. I noticed the article's title mentions something about a coffee and yep. breaking a record. Yeah, so we'll discuss the coffee first. And um, obviously Brad Pitt was coming in for one day or something like that. It's a, this is a two-second cameo. It didn't take that long to feel. Apparently it was done in a single afternoon. And like, the story goes that like, Brad came in, they put him like you know in like, a rough costume, because obviously it's going to be CGI'd on later, filmed a few shots, and then fixed the rest in post. And um, obviously you still need to be paid, even if you are only doing like a day's work, and you're doing it as a favour to a friend. And um, Ryan Reynolds, he asked, Brad, like, what do you want? And he responded, oh, a cup of coffee. And um, there's been a few like bits of misinformation about this. I think some like, versions of the story, like reported newspapers said, oh, Brad Pitt wanted a Starbucks coffee, deli hand-delivered by Ryan Reynolds himself. Some even say like, he had to do it in the Deadpool costume. But no, um, according to Ryan Reynolds himself, like Brad said, just bring me a coffee when I'm there filming and we'll call it quits. Essentially doing the whole thing for free because he's just that much of a bro. And someone out there might think, well, well, yeah, it's one day's work, but remember, this is Brad Pitt. Like, this is one of the most in-demand, like, A-list actors on the planet. Like, getting him for an afternoon is no easy feat, and they did it in return for, like, a, just a cup of coffee from the fucking food cart that was out in, like, you know, the parking lot. And that, to me, is super fucking cool. It reminds me a lot of Danny Trejo. Is that, are you familiar with, like, his work at all? No, I'm not sure. He's the big scary Mexican man. He's Machete. Oh. Yeah, well, if you see a picture, you'll know who the fuck <laughs> oh, he is. No, and, yeah. and he's in a similar boat to Brad Pitt, where he's famous enough where if he picks up his phone and says he wants to be in a movie, he can be in a movie. Oh. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Hi. Hi. Do you know anything about Danny Trejo? No. That's a little bit oh, okay, that, that would have been very though. helpful if you'd have... Anyway. He's in Spy Kids, right? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, fun fact. The character Danny Trail plays in Spy Kids is the same one he plays in Machete. Machete Cortez is the same character. So which means that the Spy Kids universe and the Machete universe exist in the same <laughs> thing. And anyway, uh, Danny Trejo, uh, even though like, he's a big dick actor and he can, like, you know, he appears in a lot of big movies and like, he gets paid very handsomely for appearing in these movies and these minor roles that he does, um, apparently really enjoys just being in student films. And, he'll, and he has, like, this standing offer to, if you call me up, like, if you call up my agent and you're a student in an area that I happen to be in and you want me to come in for a day of filming, I'll do it for free. Not to mention how much ass would it kick if you like rock up and go, okay, so yeah, here's our student film, um, and then it, well, the title card comes up with like insert shitty student, like artsy fartsy student name film, um, starring Danny Trail. Like what? How'd you get him? Call him up. Just call him up. He was free. He just turned up for a day. That'd did be it? Amazing. We just had to give him lunch. He's fine. So I've explained the coffee, but there is the record-breaking aspect of this cameo that has yet to be discussed. And um, people with more time on their hands than me, ironically considering the length of the cameo, have gone in to the film and have broken down exactly how long Brad Pitt appears on screen for. And the, the figure usually bandied about, including by myself, is two seconds. But if you actually go into the film, it's only visible for 37 frames. And obviously films are shot in like 24 frames per second, which means it's like it's more close to a second and a half. Yeah. Because like the rest of like, you know, the cameo is like obscured by the lightning that's like, you know, currently killing him. And it's been worked out that this is the shortest A-list cameo in a blockbuster movie ever. Wow. Which is now a record that Deadpool 2 holds because of a cup of coffee. And Ryan Reynolds. Of course. So, so if you got a cup of coffee and Ryan Reynolds, you could probably get Brad Pitt. sitcoms of all things just seem to be just such like right fertile ground for a cameo because just like briefly discussing it like before obviously like, you know we film this extra bit hi this is the curtain being pulled back um like lucas you just mentioned the office and uh, there's an episode of the office where they find a, like they want to replace michael scott at like the american office and they they use that as like oh yeah this is just an excuse to get five fucking cameos in I think, like, who, who do they get for that episode? I forget. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah Ricky Gervais comes who in. Who is in the UK office. In the UK, comes in. <laughs> at, like, he, like, reprises his role as David Brent to come back in. Yeah. And, like, that show had so many just random actors just coming, like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do a day's film in. Like, Jim Carrey did it. Yeah, Jim Carrey came in. Jim fucking Carrey. Again, like, one of the biggest names in Hollywood. Like, turned up for a day of filming. Yeah. For this stupid, nothing role. Presumably because he was a fan of the show. Like you mentioned, like how I met your mother. Like, who, like, who do you say they managed to get on that? 
Um, well, I saw Britney Spears and I had to look it up because I was like, that can't that's, be that's Britney, Britney Spears. Spears. And it is. And then um, the one I watched recently, Katy Perry, um, I think it was her. Yeah. It looked, she is definitely her, yeah. Because I was like, again, I was like, really confused. Cause yeah. like, why well, would she the, be in this? And then I think Nicole Scherzinger. Uh, the king of this is The Simpsons and they're arguably the originator of the trope of, is that insert person? Yeah. And they actually have Katy Perry in an episode. Mm. And it's the live action episode where they do like the puppets versions of like The Simpsons and Katy Perry turns up. And then like Mr. Byrne just stares at tits. It's really fucking weird. It's a really, <laughs> really weird. But they get her in. And I distinctly recall there being an episode where right at the end of it, for no reason, like Bart, like the voice of Bart just says, ladies and gentlemen, Fallout Boy. And Fallout Boy sings over the credits. And they're not in the episode. But they sing the final song oh, I think I for that. no reason. I think I remember that because I was like, what the hell? It's like, and speaking of like random bands, Scooby Doo. Sticking like, Scooby Doo have so many. Like, don't Simple Plan turn up in an episode of Scooby Doo? I know in the. They sing the song, um, don't they? They sing it like the What's New Scooby Doo. They yeah. sing the theme song. And keeping in a similar vein, like South Park, when they parodied Scooby Doo for like the Spooky Pirate Ghost episode, they get corn in. And they have potentially what is my favourite joke in South Park, where they go, form of corn. And they all just turn into corn. <laughs> and I just found that really funny for some reason. And they all did the voices again. That's and that cracks me the fuck up. And then we start, like, got the Chef Aid episode, yeah. where they have like everybody in it. Like, I think they have like meatloaf and all that shit just randomly come in for like, one like, line. And they attribute all their success to Chef. Because <laughs> originally meatloaf wanted to be called couscous. <laughs> so nobody likes couscous. Hey, it has some meatloaf. It's all cool. <laughs> Bring it back to Scooby Doo again. Okay, yeah. I know you've not watched Supernatural, but they did a crossover yeah, with Scooby Doo as fuck? well, which was really good because I remember like um, one of the main characters, uh, Dean, he fancies Daphne, and it, who the, doesn't? The, the entire time he's just trying to get to Daphne. Do you know what that says to me though? That whoever that character is is a fucking like he's a coward because it's it's Velma. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it fucking is like. And I love how they acknowledge that in the live action version, yeah. where they get the clearly hotter person to play Velma in all the live action stuff on yeah. Scooby Doo. When she um, has that makeover, um, where like Daphne does the makeover yeah. for her, she looks so hot. Yeah, and she just rocks down. It's like that's right. It's like in uh, what is it now? The live action Flintstones, oh, yeah. where everybody knows it's Betty. Yeah, Betty. Yeah. Betty is the one, and I, I forget who they get to play, but I like, know. They are not doing Betty any fucking justice in that shot. That, that's why Barney puts up with Fred. Because he knows, at the end of the day, he gets to go home and bang that super hot cartoon woman. None of that like live action. Then the casting of um, like, you know, John Goodman as Fred Flintstone was like inspired, and you've got to forgive it. Wait, what were we talking about again? Uh, cameos. Oh. 